Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. Two bishops from Chile met with reporters on the eve of a three-day meeting between Pope Francis and 34 Chilean bishops at the Vatican. The bishops will be discussing with the Pope their handling of clerical sexual abuse allegations. Rome Reports has more from the press conference. Beginning on Tuesday afternoon, the majority of the Chilean bishops will meet with Pope Francis to be informed on the extent of the abuse crisis in their country and look for a way forward. Two of them gave a preview of the encounter during a press conference, saying they're in pain and ashamed. We're beginning this process of encounter and discernment with the Holy Father. As we said, our initial attitude is one of listening. We believe he's going to give us relevant and very important information to be able to take this journey. For right now, if this problem continues, if the pain, accusations, and discomfort of some victims continue, it means we haven't done our work and we must do better. I think there's a really important space for self-evaluation there that we must improve. Just like there are other potential areas like redemption, being able to have the necessary mechanisms to be able to handle these situations. It's still unknown which measures the Pope will take to address the issue, and dismissal of some bishops has not been ruled out. I stand next to the victims and say, I understand, and stay there. Secondly, we all know that the nomination and dismissal of a bishop is something under the Pope's control. That could happen, but it doesn't depend on us. I think everyone must discern with the Pope. The encounters will continue until Thursday at least. They will take place in a confidential environment, and it's uncertain when the Vatican will reveal the Holy Father's conclusions. In news from around the world, according to news reports, a series of bombings against three churches in Indonesia over the weekend have left at least 12 people dead and over 40 injured. The suicide blasts were carried out by a husband, wife, and their four children. The first bombing was carried out by the couple's 18- and 16-year-old sons in the parking lot of the Santa Maria Catholic Church. The second was by the wife and their two daughters, who were 12 and 9 years old, at the Dipanagoro Indonesian Christian Church. And the third was detonated outside the Surabaya Central Pentecost Church. At the Regina Celli on Sunday in St. Peter's Square, Pope Francis spoke about the attacks, calling on the violence to stop. He also addressed the celebration of World Day of Social Communications by greeting journalists who seek the truth. Saluto tutti gli operatori dei media, in particolare i giornalisti che si impegnano a cercare la verità delle notizie, contribuendo a una società giusta e pacifica. He then sent a powerful message condemning the suicide attacks targeting three Catholic churches in Indonesia. More than 40 people were hospitalized with injuries and at least 13 killed. Elevo la mia preghiera per tutte le vittime e i loro congiunti. Insieme invochiamo il Dio della pace affinché faccia cessare queste violente azioni e nel cuore di tutti trovino spazio non sentimenti di odio e violenza, ma di riconciliazione e di fraternità. Pope Francis also made sure to greet all mothers on Mother's Day, asking everyone to thank them for guarding the family. More news from around the world. In Ireland, pro-life supporters have criticized tech giant Google on their decision to ban campaign ads before a May 25th referendum on whether the right to life of the unborn will remain protected in the Constitution. Google announced May 9th it would ban all campaign ads from the search engine and the YouTube website. A spokesman said Google had become concerned by electoral integrity, fearing if the referendum were defeated, Google would be the subject of blame and scrutiny of their role in election campaigns. Cora Sherlock of the Love Both campaign said the decision shuts out the pro-life side of the debate by the mainstream media. Abortion is currently illegal in Ireland, except that there is a risk to the life of the mother. Polls have shown a clear lead for the pro-choice position, but a 10 percent swing against the repeal has bolstered pro-life activists in the final weeks of the campaign. In news from the Vatican, a custom-built 2018 Lamborghini autographed by Pope Francis raised nearly $1 million at a Sotheby's auction recently in Monaco. The Italian luxury car maker had donated the car to the Pope and was put up for auction with a final selling price of about $970,000.
The customized Lamborghini that was given to Pope Francis last November now has a new owner. At the RM Sotheby auction in Monaco on May 12th, the car sold for a whopping 715,000 euros. While the buyer will now have a truly one-of-a-kind automobile, various charities will receive funding. As previously determined by the Holy Father, the proceeds will benefit three humanitarian projects, including aid for Christians who fled the Islamic State in the Nineveh Plains in Iraq, as well as for female victims of human trafficking and prostitution. Boasting a Vatican City color scheme complete with Pope Francis's signature, the car is truly a vehicle for charity. And finally in the news, the Congregation for Saints Causes has given the go-ahead for the opening of the sainthood cause of an Iraqi priest and three deacons who were murdered by armed gunmen in Mosul. Chaldean Father Rahid Aziz Ghani, along with the three deacons, were killed June 3, 2007 in front of the Holy Spirit Church in Mosul after celebrating Mass. Armed gunmen shot the four men and then booby-trapped their car with explosives to prevent others from safely recovering the bodies. FIDE's news agency has confirmed that the eparchy of St. Thomas the Apostle of Detroit will be handling the sainthood cause because of the difficult condi conditions facing the church in Mosul. Well, that's all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.